Glam Blitz and Rainmaker are some of my favorite modes in Splatoon, but they're also some of the most controversial and have some problems that I totally understand. However, with them being brought back in Splatoon 3, they've both undergone a bit of changes, and today I want to talk about them and why they make the modes better. So be sure to subscribe if you enjoy my breakdown, and let's get started. Let's start with Rainmaker and the most obvious change to it, which is that it now has checkpoints, which while it's a really cool feature, I don't think the directs really explain just how amazing it is. A lot of people immediately assume this would work just like tower control, where you go to a specific checkpoint before you can go to the next one and then the goal, and that's not entirely true. While you do have to go through a checkpoint before you can reach the goal, you don't have to go through multiple, only one of them, and for some stages, you'll have multiple checkpoints and be able to choose which one you want to go to. Compared to tower control, these checkpoints are significantly more fluid, and the ability to go to multiple of them and pick which one you want means that you still have a lot of alternate paths that fit great for the mode. Once you do reach that checkpoint, point, you're able to get access to your main weapon again and have to repop the shield, and the goal will fully activate. You don't have to go through a checkpoint multiple times. Once it's down, it is done. So the main thing this is trying to address is really obvious. Games that end in 30 seconds because one team breaks away the Rainmaker. Now, while at higher ranks and competitive play, this isn't as big an issue, when I revisited C- Rainmaker, almost half the games ended in the first 30 seconds with a quick push. So I think the decision to add checkpoints makes a lot more sense from that level. In lower ranks, these games are just way too fast, and making it easier to recover and slowing down the pace of the game a bit I think makes sense there. At higher ranks in competitive play though, where people are more coordinated and the pushes don't instantly end the game, we're going to see a brand new dynamic at the start of the game, where players have to decide which checkpoint they're going to go to and defend, and that basically adds an entirely new phase to the game. On the player side, I think it adds a ton of unique strategy and makes the objective more fun, while as a spectator I think it gives more to look at. Checkpoints also allow something really interesting, which is that the Rainmaker user can put it down without either ending the game or exploding. Say you have a special ready, the entire enemy team is down, but you don't want to have to lose it by grabbing the Rainmaker. You can now just pick it up, get the checkpoint, and then use it afterward when the enemy team is regrouped. I think that's a cool change, and it means that people are going to be more willing to grab the Rainmaker, even in times where they have their special. Before I get into my overall thoughts on the changes, there are a few smaller things that I want to point out. As per usual with this game, the UI is drastically improved. It now shows the Rainmaker for your main weapon icon when you pick it up, and your special, so your team can easily tell who's holding it. The goalposts now have giant Rainmaker symbols on the top of them, so it's really easy to tell where they are, even if you're not familiar with the stage layout. And it now shows which team is in the lead, though this is on every single mode, so I'm just going to point it out here. There are two other indirect changes that I think will affect this mode a lot. The first one being that Stingray's no longer in the game. Now, in Splatoon 2, especially if you've ever seen a top level match, teams will play around if the enemy C-Jet has Stingray ready because it will just straight up kill the Rainmaker since it's aimable across the stage. It's crazy how much playing around good Rainmaker pushes and defense revolves around that special, and with it gone, you can implement so much more strategy because you don't have to worry about the clock until the death laser appears. This has easily been the worst part of this mode in Splatoon 2, and I cannot believe it's gonna be gone. It's gonna be so much nicer to play. However, I do think a new special is going to affect the Rainmaker meta pretty drastically in even more levels of play than Stingray does in Splatoon 2, which is Tacticooler. Not only can the Rainmaker be chained the effects from this ability, but the effects being Swim Speed, Run Speed, Better Squid Roll and Surge, and Quick Respawn are all super relevant to how you play around Rainmaker and especially for the Rainmaker Carrier. Oh yeah, by the way, you can still use the new movement options when carrying the Rainmaker, so that's cool. In Splatoon 2, the main supportive special, Ink Armor, didn't chain to the Rainmaker user whatsoever, so it's going to be crazy to see how teams play around one that actually does revolve around Rainmaker and how the mode is played quite significantly. Unlike Stingray though, I think this increases the pace of the mode and gives more options, and I think in general more mobility and faster respawns are going to be really entertaining to watch, so I'm really looking forward to that. Not only do I think Nintendo drastically improved this mode by giving it the changes it's needed for a while, but they address the issues at both lower and higher skill brackets while adding more to the mode in all levels of play. I think there's a good chance Rainmaker could become my new favorite mode in Splatoon 3, and that sounds really exciting. So now let's jump to the mode that's the most hated, which is Clam Blitz. So I've talked a lot about Clam Blitz before, but if you're unfamiliar with it, this mode is exceptional at team plays due to having
having multiple people being able to contribute to the objective, allowing for really unique plays that can only be done in that mode. However, in a solo queue environment, because it's so coordination dependent in a game where you can only use this way in Booyah, it's an absolute nightmare to try to do anything and everything feels split up. I've said before in my modes ranking video for Splatoon 2, you should check that out if you haven't already, that Clam Blitz needs to simplify the objective to make it easier to understand and better for people to work with each other, and I do think they've done that. The mode has undergone two similar changes in order to help with these issues, the first of which being the UI. You can now look at the top of your screen to see the exact amount of clams every player on the map has, including who has a football. And secondly, you now only need eight clams to make a power instead of ten. I believe these changes both serve to make the objective simpler to understand and to communicate things more easily so people can work better together as a team. Time will have to tell to see how well this actually matters, but I think there are positive changes at the very least, though I would like to see a few more things. I think this mode needs a little bit more of a tutorial to help teach people how to play the mode. I've encountered comments of people saying they don't even know how to pass clams to each other, and I think it's still a bit too complex to just throw players into the mode. And secondly, please add more communication options. Having a button that could do something like help with the objective would be huge for helping solo queue players coordinate. Outside of that, we can speculate that there might be less overall clam spawns and that normal clams may be worth two points instead of three, which would make pushes less snowball-y and require multiple of them to get a knockout, which I think would also be positive, although minor changes, and further help simplify the mode. While the changes to these two modes may seem small, I think it does a good job of making them easier to understand and much better to play at all skill levels, which is huge. And if you're going into Splatoon 3 with negative perceptions of these two modes, I encourage you to give them another shot. But let me know what you guys think. Would you like to see more ranked mode changes? And I'll see you guys in another video.